Welcome back to Wayne's World, the PlayStation, where we play, collect, and talk about everything PlayStation. Now, today's going to be another one of these videos where I'm just sat in front of the camera, ranting, giving my opinion that no one's asked for. I want to talk about collecting physical media, well, games in particular. Is it the right time to do it now? Because people are saying about values and this and that and the other. I just want to give my 10 cents. I like to use this platform to get have a discussion, get in the comments. We can all have a chat. Um, your opinions, my opinions. I may be wrong. You may be wrong. We can throw ideas about, and I just think it's great. I did a video previously on IO games with what they think they are, and I really enjoyed the outcome of that. Like, there was loads of people in the comments, um, you know, gave me a different point of view, and I just really enjoyed it. So I'm going to try and do videos on different subjects. Not going to be regular, so don't hold me to it. But when I get the time and I think of a subject worth discussing, I'm going to chuck a video together like this. Very little editing, just me chatting crap to the camera and you can all get involved. So my two cents on collecting physical games is, at the moment, there is no better time. Now, you've all heard of various other YouTubers that the, a lot of the Xbox servers are going to be closing and the values are spiking. So that would be a reason to go and buy those games because obviously the value is only going to go up, so get them while they're cheap. But I, I want to generalise now. I'm talking about gaming in general. Um, you've all seen the prices of retro games. They, they are going up and up and up. They do have a slight decline now and again, but then they seem to go up. Now, what you will find is a lot of the games that are going up in value are games that you can't get anywhere else. So there's no digital platform to play them on. There's, you know, you, you can't rent them from anywhere or whatnot. You have to buy the physical media to play it. For instance, a lot of the Silent Hill games, you, you can't download them anywhere. They are quite a higher priced series of games because the only way you can play them is actually own the physical games or through an emulator, which a lot of people don't like doing emulation. Whereas, on the other hand, you have other games which you can just download from the PlayStation Store or whatever, which will bring that price down. But as soon as they're out of the stores, the physical prices will go up because people enjoy playing these games. Now, why didn't this happen with DVDs, you ask? The reason for that is there are so many streaming services out there. Pretty much any movie you get on DVD, you can stream somewhere, whether it be through Prime, Netflix, or Apple TV, or any other provider. If you can think of a film, you're going to find it on one of those providers with video games you can't really stream them. You do have some streaming service like um, like Xbox Games Pass, but you're not going to be able to stream Mario 3 or you're not going to be able to stream Altered Beast and things like that. Obviously, things are moving forward slightly now where they are bringing out these emulations and things like the Nintendo Switch library is bringing a lot of these retro things back, which is great. But it's a paid subscription and if you don't want to be tied down to a paid subscription, the only way is to buy the physical games. And... There is something said about having physical media. Now, moving forward to this generation, I think physical games are only going to get rarer. So this generation at the moment, so put this in your mind, back 15, 20 years ago when I started gaming and I was playing my PS2 and PS1, if a company released a game, they would send out 5 million copies or sell 5 million copies. All 5 million would be physical. So they are all in circulation. They're being sold secondhand, traded in and whatnot, thrown in the bin. So 20 years later, there is still a large amount of those games about. Nowadays, there's digitals and there is physicals. So if they sell 5 million games, I don't know the actual percentages. I haven't done any research, typical me. But say if it was a 50-50 split, if you sold 5 million games, 2.5 million would be digital. There's only 2.5 million out in the wild. Um which are then going to be sold, traded in, and thrown in the bin. <clears throat> That's providing a game sells 5 million. If a game only sells 500,000 copies, you've only got 250,000 physical copies in them, which is going to, in another 20 years' time, because a lot of these, these games now, PS5s, they are quite, they're coming down in price secondhand. You can get games for £10, some are even a fiver, £12, £15. I can see those prices dropping, as they do with every console, um, over the next couple of years. However, I think in the future, in 10 years' time, these consoles will actually be, be more collectible purely because there's going to be less 
of them about. So, for instance, a lot of people collect N64 and there's some heavy hitters on the N64. But if you think a game has got a low low print rate from th th those days and it's worth a lot, imagine what that print rate would be like if 50% of those sold were actually digital as well. There wasn't any, there wasn't the physical side. So I, I got a little hankering in my mind. It could be wrong. Like I said, leave it in the comments that the later PS4s and the PS5s and obviously the Xbox, these are going to go up in price in years to come purely because there's going to be less of them around. And for dig, um, physical collectors, they're going to want these games. If they haven't snapped them up now, they aren't going to want these games and they're probably going to end up paying premium for them. And another reason I think is time to buy some physical games is there aren't that many great games being produced at the moment, which is why I think is another reason that these older consoles are going up in price because people are jumping on them more now. People are going back to the PS3s and the PS2s and the Xbox 360s. They're playing these games because the new generation, let's be honest, is a shit show. Microsoft is dying. Um, Xbox is dying, I should say. is now switching over to Microsoft Gaming. I can see them being... Digital only before long, so you're not going to be able to buy them. Everything will be on Game Pass. They're just going to be a streaming service, and then they're going to develop games for other systems, whether it be PlayStation or Nintendo or PC. Now, um, I'm not just going to go out on a limb and say Xbox is dying. PlayStation is also on a slippery slope. There's so many live service games coming out that no one wants. All these big developers now, like Warner Brothers with the Suicide Squad, had a massive, massive fail there. They just can't, I think if it wasn't for Hogwarts, that company may have gone bankrupt. They had such a great hit with Hogwarts. Their, their money then, their revenue in their bank was up here. Suicide Squad has dropped that right down here. They lost so much money on that game. If they didn't have that, that cushion from Hogwarts, that would probably cause them serious trouble. But what have they done? They've decided, right, we're not going to go back to what we know. We made Hogwarts. It was a fantastic game. Best-selling game ever. We're not going to go back and do another game like that. No, we're going to stick with the live service. Even though this one just fucking flopped, let's just carry on making live service, which is an absolute joke. You've got companies going out of, bust out, going out of business everywhere. Um, AAA titles are taking way too long to make. And I know they're striving for perfection on all the graphics and stuff, but they need to learn... Graphics aren't everything. It's all well having something look pretty, but if it doesn't play that great, no one's going to want to bother with it. Skull and Bones, for instance, that looks quite a nice game, but absolute flop again. And these games are taking four, five, six years sometimes. Well, look at GTA, how long is that taken for GTA 6? I will say they probably haven't been in a rush because of the online and they've, they've kept revenue coming in. But these games, Spider-Man 2 and everything else... You're not back in the day. You get game after game after game after game. Nowadays, you are waiting years for a game. So we don't have that volume of games. So back in the day, it was just game after game after game. Like I said, you could finish a game, go pick up a new game. Finish a game, pick up a new game. There was all these fresh ideas thrown out. There are little. There are a few indie developers out there that are making cracking games. All the power to them because the triple A's. They're taking so long between games. It is a joke. Absolute joke. 2024 has probably been the worst year of gaming, to my knowledge. They've just had the PlayStation Showcase. Absolute shit show. There is nothing on there to be excited about. The first game was an Overwatch slash Fortnite clone, which is another live service game. Most gamers don't want that. Most gamers. I'm not saying all. There are Fortnite and things do have a massive following, but most gamers want games they can actually sink their teeth into. A good story, single player, and have some fun. Um... God of War was just a PC port. You've had a remake of Until Dawn, which no one really cares about because it's not even that old. Um, Astro Bot was about the only good thing on that show and Silent Hill 2, which a lot of people are giving a bit of slack. I think it looks okay. But again, another remake. There's nothing coming out. There's nothing. So people are trying to scratch that itch. They want a game. So they're going back to these older consoles and playing games. Either they have nostalgia for because they remembered it was good and I haven't played it for 10 years or games they never got around to play in the last generation so they're trying them for the first time. Me, myself, I'm experiencing a lot of these games for the first time myself. Um, like I've said in the past, 
my gaming history is I had a big break of gaming for 10 years, so I missed the second half of the PS3 cycle and all the PS4. So there's loads of titles I am trying to catch up on, and I think it's fantastic, which I'm probably doing it at the right time because there's no new games coming out that are really wetting my whistle at the moment. So I'm, I, all I want to say on that point is get the games now before, because everyone's jumping on the bandwagon and they are creeping up and creeping up and creeping up and creeping up. And my last point I'm going to make of this video, shoot me down in the comments if you want, is this bloody woke community lark. Um, all these games are being told what they can and cannot put in their games. They had to change Mary Jane in Spider-Man 2. Um, he's not normally like that, right? No. He's never like that. Um... Spider-Man 2 has got LGBT flags in, in the background, which is all power to you. You know, I'm, I'm down with everything. Do whatever you want. But then they release a Saudi Arabia version without it in. So they're, they're changing games to for their audience. Um, they're trying to make things better. There was a boycott on Stella Blade because she looked too pretty. Their outfits wasn't this, wasn't that. I'm sorry, but me personally, I the reason I game is to escape reality. You know, I've got three children i've got uh, my own business to run i have financial difficulties on times i have work overload where i got so many things to get done i've got paperwork to do invoices to do quotes to do i need to escape reality sometimes i get stressed escaping reality is is in gaming for me that is how i do it i get transported to another world i don't have to think about real life i i go somewhere else if you are filling games with all this woke shit that are trying to please everyone and stuff, you are bringing reality into gaming. And to me, I really don't want that. Um, leave the politics at the door. To me, gaming is an art form. Would you go back and tell people that the Mona Lisa should not be called a female? She should be called a them or a shim or whatever they get called nowadays because... It's a work of art. It's from someone's imagination, and that is how they've imagined it. Gaming isn't real life, people. If someone wants to look a certain way, they can look a certain way. It's someone's imagination. It is how they perceived it in their mind. It is their art form. It is how they wanted it to work. People are saying, well, people don't look like that in real life. To be honest, there are people who do look like that in real life. So you're kind of discriminating against them now if you're changing it to make it look like someone else so i'm not going to open this massive can of worms but it's just getting too much you know and the games are being changed they took bits out of stellar blade they took bits out of spider-man they changed char uh, character models you don't get that in the old games you go and play a game if you want to be a woman in a bikini like lollipop chainsaw chopping up zombies with a chainsaw um swearing and saying whatever you want you can do it can't do that anymore. Censorship has got way too much. Um, you can't play what you want to play. God help GTA 6, that's what I'm going to say. Because we all know Rockstar have had problems with um, censorship in the past. And a lot of that was violence and swearing things. But now it's it's just getting out of hand, man, with all this woke nonsense. I'm not going to brag go on about that too much because I will get haters. I can't deal with it. I haven't got time. I really don't want the issues like i said this is my opinion that no one asked for i'm just throwing it out there so to me if they're going to keep pissing around with games and changing them i won't even touch them you know i want to play a game how it was intended to be played not altered this way that way and the other way to you know please sam smith and all the others like i said everyone's entitled to what they want to do be called what you want to be called, dress how you want to dress, but do not try and ram it down everyone's throats and get it in every piece of media on the planet. As other people, we, you know, we're entitled to our individuality as well. And if we want to escape to a different world and be a dinosaur smoking crack, killing, I don't know, aliens in a quad bike, let us do it. It's not real life. It doesn't matter if the dinosaur is the wrong colour or if um one of the enemies looks too sexy or is sexualizing women or sexualizing men just leave it be it, it's fiction and it's just someone's imagination so i think a lot of people well i say i think a lot of people i will be i'll be going back to older games because i didn't have to put up with that bullshit sorry if i'm looking a bit red in the face
<coughs> I just had a massive coughing fit. But that is why I think you should buy physical games now. Like I said, drop comments in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Tell me I'm wrong. I don't care. I, I love it. I like being proved wrong. Um, I like having a chat with you all. And that is why I think now is the time to buy physical games. Servers are closing, which are going to push prices up. There's more interest in playing the older games purely because people want to get rid of all this crap and, you know, they're trying out new things. There's no there's no new games coming out, so people want to try the older ones. And I think in the future, there's going to be less and less physical about. So these the ones out now are probably going to be on the pricey side in a few years' time. So get them while you can, folks. If you want to save yourself some money, there's no point paying over the odds in a year or two. And it is cool to have a nice shelf with some physical games on. You can actually look at and look at the books. And, you know, it's, it's a talking point with your friends as well. It's almost like collecting art. So that is my 10 cents on that. Like I said, drop in the comments your opinions. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We are nearly at 5,000 subscribers. I am over the moon. Hit the like button if you like this kind of content. And... Join the Wolf Pack if you want to support this channel. We are now up to six members. We have got Roma Ogoon. And we have got Hilly Bear. So that is six of us all together in Wayne's Wolf Pack. We have got two Wolf Packs and four Wayne Curs. So if you want to support the channel, you can support it from as little as 99 pence a month. And I will see you all on the next one, folks. So take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Game on. Respect to the gamer, name of Wayne in his world PlayStation. Wayne's the same, and he's got love for the levels. I score or not, but for now, he'll show you why his collection's hot. Wayne's world! Game